Hi guys, I got my geeky glasses on. I gotta switch. That's better. Um, so, I uh, had a night vision. Uh, at least I was studying in the book of Daniel and uh, Nebuchadnezzar and, and the dreams and Daniel was interpreting it, you know, and they didn't really call them dreams, they called them night visions which I thought that was interesting. Um, but anyways, this one I had about a week ago, and I've been like pondering over it and going, do you want me to share it? Is it something that's important? And it was, you know, another one of those very vivid, I'm living in the moment type of uh, dream, you know, and I'm uh, going through it. And so here it is. It's nighttime. It's windy. Um, I find myself on a boat, and I think these numbers are important. It was either 32 feet long or 40 feet long. Um, and I was up on the bridge and um, had a, like a, a canopy over it because some ships, um, they're kind of like convertibles where if it's a sunny day and you want to open it up, um, you can put the canopy down and then it's open air, right? Or if you have really bad weather, um, you can put the tarp up and it's enclosed, you know, so you're not sitting there in the rain and the wind and everything else. So, uh, the tarp was up and I was there and there was somebody steering the boat that didn't have experience. Um, I don't know who it was, but it was a male, dark hair, and he was holding the steering wheel like this, right? Because they have these big wheels. And um, <clears throat> he didn't look like he knew what he was doing. Uh, there was a lot of wind and buffeting on the tarp and everything else like that. And then I saw a globe. Um, it's a compass, right? And it's a glass dome with underneath the dial and everything so you know which direction you're going and the numbers, right? Um, and I saw it was spinning back, forth, back, forth. And the, the guy, the kid, I mean, he was young, but he was not that young. I mean, 20s, you know, 30s at the most, but I think he was in his 20s. And this is the first time he's ever handled a, a boat, ship, um, kind of thing. And he was trying to get out of the marina. And the dial was spinning and the wind was blowing. And he was like trying to back up and he was trying to go forward and he was trying to back up. You know, and he's being tossed around by the winds, which automatically made me think of, you know, a a um, person of a divided mind. You know, they're thrown about around by the winds of doctrine. Where if we are standing on a firm foundation, which is in Christ, you know, and He is our salvation, then you know, and that's the story of the house built on sand or a house built on rock, and when the winds came great was a fall. Uh, I think this is partly due to financial situations right now. Um, but anyways, so he's backing up and he's doing pretty good. People are yelling, yelling outside the boat, yelling and down underneath in the boat, just yelling at this guy and he's getting all nervous. You know, he finally gets out to, out of the marina, but into the bay, but he's not out into the ocean, right? And so, all these boats are surrounding him, and I remember seeing this guy in a kayak actually ramming the boat and being broken apart. Um, I don't know what that means, you know. And um, finally the kid uh, kind of gave up and put it kind of in neutrals, just idling, turn off the engine. You know, he says, I can't do this, you know. And then I remember somebody coming in going, here, I'll just take over. And then I woke up. Um, what does this mean? Winds of change, uh, the winds of doctrine, or the um, um, those that are not firm in their foundation of um, beliefs or morals, or or um, that Christ is the truth, the way, right? The way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father but through him. He That's it. You know, it's a narrow path, you know, almost single file. And one person 
uh, after another, you know, through the narrow gate. And it seems like uh, the world is going to be, a lot of people are going to be tossed to and fro, you know, and whether the compass works or not, I don't know what that was, you know, but it was a changing situation and a struggle. Um, and I was, I was for, I was fine. I was just sitting there going, okay, you know, doing what you're doing. Um, you know best, right? Because I don't think this kid wanted to listen to anybody. He had his pride, you know. As much as he was struggling, he didn't want to admit that he was having a hard time. Uh, I think this is kind of an analogy of what's going on and what's coming, you know. That we're not to fear. We don't give an, We're not given a spirit of fear, you know. Sound mind, and know that, you know. We cast all our burdens on Him. We pray to Him. We ask Him. You know, he answers on his own volition. He's God. Who can tell him? In fact, I was reading this um, Nebuchadnezzar, the the king, who was given a, a heart of a beast for seven years. And he finally came to his senses and realized that, you know, God puts in charge who he wants to and he takes out who he wants to. You know, who can say no to him and who can stop his right arm? You know, which we know his right arm, right hand is is Yeshua, Jesus, right? So if he's created everything, um, I think he knows best. And I whatever he says goes, right? Uh, I've also come to realize that evil, the enemy, has a purpose in a sense that God doesn't sin, you know, yet he sends nations Wicked, evil nations, which is people, um, or countries or kingdoms, one against uh, the other for correction or for rebuke. Um, so, yeah, he's sovereign. So what's the point? Put down your pride. Because I also read that too, that, you know, he has all authority to correct people that are of their pride, you know, or proudful, or haughty, or arrogant, um, but he likes a humble heart. And so then, since he is the way, the truth, and the life, and his blood shed on the cross um, after he walked here on earth, and then had to go to the cross because there was no other way, shed his blood, was in the earth three days, and then he rose again, Proving that hell and death have no um, authority over him. In fact, he has all authority over heaven and earth. So, if he's got all the authority over heaven and earth and all creation because he created it, wouldn't it make sense to humble your heart, get on your knees, pray, repent, ask for forgiveness, um, and watch what he does, you know? Change my heart. Change my life. And then, of course, um, I've also noticed that the pride thing is like, you're your own God. I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. That's what Satan said, you know. Versus, hey, God, what do you want? How You created me, so how can I glorify you? It becomes, it becomes instead of a, a me... Thing, it becomes a you thing and then eventually as your relationship grows it's a we thing you know he's your God who loves you very much sacrificed his life laid it down and picked it up again because he doesn't want to see you go to the lake of fire to go to hell he doesn't want you to perish you know but he's graceful in the sense he gave us a free will so, he can say, well done, good and faithful servant, because you loved me, but because I loved you first, that you love me. Because I did these things for you, do you love me? No, it gets to the point where you just do, because of who he is. And all very much grateful for 
everything he has done and will do um, out of love. You know, even the corrections or the um, slaps on the wrist or the, I thought I was going this way. And nope. And he says, no, you're going that way. Okay. Look at Jonah, right? Go tell Nineveh. They got 40 days. No, I don't want to. Ran away. God says, okay, I'm going to put some correction on you. You know, goes in a boat, which I saw an analogy. Goes in the boat, goes to sleep down the bottom. Storms, waves, and everything else, you know. And you can read the story in Jonah. I won't have to go over it. Um, but I did notice that Jesus got into the boat and fell asleep. Same thing, right? Jonah fell asleep. Jesus fell asleep, you know. But what did Yeshua, Jesus do? He got up and rebuked the wind and the waves and said, enough, stop. And then whew, it was calm. And they said, only God could do this. Yeah, get the hint. Okay. Anyways, love you guys. That was my dream. And um, I've got another something to post, but i got to figure out how to do it. So, love you guys. I can't wait to see you in the next video.